I think there's always challenges for documentary. The term documentary in cinema is one challenge because, you know, how do you get the audience to the cinema? This is what we all, we're all the time struggling with. Documentary lends itself, I think, in a bigger way for TV. So documentary cinema is a much more challenging thing because it's a very expensive, it's very expensive to put a film in a cinema. The film I have here now is a Syrian love story and in September we put it in the cinema in England and we do a very careful campaign to, to get an audience for the film and we, we're not kind of unrealistic with trying to put it into too many cinemas and we're very targeted at the, trying to get the audience to come to the cinema by having me and the family do the Q&A's and have a lot of press and we're going to carefully craft a two-week cinema run in, in the UK around selected cinemas up to the BBC screening so all of the press of the, of the cinema screenings will be maximised when it goes on television so in a way we're using both, they're both supporting and helping each other and, um, and I think we just have to be very targeted about who, you, who you're aiming your film at and not be unrealistic it's a documentary about Syria. It's not going to get Harry Potter fans to come to the cinema to watch it. <laughs> so there's no point being in those screens. You have to be in the right screens and think about the audience. There is a target audience when I'm making the film. And the target audience are usually ordinary people. In my mind, it's my friends in the north of England who are my target audience. That's just a creative thing. That's not cinema or TV. That's just who am I talking to with this film in how I choose the characters, how I choose the story. You know, my films were in the, in the Middle East and not intellectual films about the history of the Arabic struggle. The character-based portraits that somehow illuminate the struggles of d the day-to-day -day life of struggles of people there. I'm doing that on purpose to get an audience that wouldn't normally engage in these areas, to engage with the characters that I find who are somehow attractive or maybe even like my friends in the north of England. In a funny kind of way, wherever I go in the world, I'm looking for my, for my mates in the north of England. I made my, for my graduation film at the National Film and Television School with my mates in the north. And one of them was in a relationship that was breaking down with his girlfriend called Andy, my closest friend. In fact, Andy is the person that's always in my head when I'm th thinking about who, who the target audience is. And he was invited to the premiere of the film in Sheffield. And so well, the film played and uh, I came to do the Q&A and uh, I saw him in the front row and someone asked this question and I said, well, actually, we can ask Andy ourselves because he's here. <laughs> so I took the microphone to the audience and I said, Andy, how do you think? Does, is it, did, 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 did you engage with this film well? And he said, uh, actually, it reminded me of the film you made about me <laughs> 20 years ago. When I'm even looking for the characters and looking for the stories, obviously you talk to the BBC, but to be honest, I'm talking to my friends and I'm sort of sending them little bits uh, to look at saying, is it interesting? Is he interesting? Is it good? What do you think? And they go, ah, it's fucking boring. And then, you know, like, oh, yeah, it's good, it's good. So they're my gauge, not, not the execs in the BBC. My friends up north. When you're thinking about cinema, um, you're thinking about, I suppose you're thinking about the bigger scale you're thinking about how to tell the film differently. We edited the film, The Syrian Love Story, and we finished it. Um, and I use my voice in the film to just keep, just to provide information, but also to keep the audience settled because it's very much my point of view and, and my voice helps the journey along. And then we screened the film in Sheffield and it won the Grand Jury Prize and all of the juries came up to me and said, it's so close from being a masterpiece. All you need to do is take out your voice in these places. So I went back in, 2,000 pounds expense, to, the, to, to, to take the, uh, the, my voice out in these places. 
for the cinema because in the cinema it works much more as a visual medium. But the question is whether that version will work on television and whether for television it's better to keep my voice because you've got an, an audience that are not sat in a dark room locked into the picture. You've got an audience that are changing channels, that are making tea, that are feeding kids, that are doing a whole load of different things whilst your film is on TV. So they go away, they come back and they're, what's happening now? Where are we? The voice kind of helps to carry the picture. So you have to think differently for the small screen and the big screen, I think. It's problematic because um, the BBC and Channel 4 have a, a, a sort of minimum requirement for um, the quality now. And that means that they want me to work on a camera maybe this big because the audience are buying televisions that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So they, they want full HD, 4K, 8K, 10K. They want the best. And, and that puts a demand on us to be shooting in higher quality. But I managed to get an exception from this rule. It's liberating, the technology, because it means I can actually buy a camera for £300 that's shooting something like HD. The Syrian love story was filmed on a small camera with no microphone, no, no radio mic. It's a small domestic camera, and it's just about me being intense in a story. Um, and it's going in the cinemas. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a way, it's good. The technology allows me to use the small camera because we can, you can still get away with having a, big, uh, a beautiful image from a small camera. I don't know anybody working on film. I know people that want to shoot 4K and have this incredible image. Um, and it comes with limitations. It comes with a cost. And I think it's portability. It's, it's, it's huge and it's heavy and you, ca you can't record as much material, you need more space for it. But I think the other thing that's aesthetically different is between these cameras, which, um, uh, or this camera that I use, which has uh, a very, I don't know, it just records things as opposed to the, uh, what do you call it, the 5 or the XLR style cameras that has a beautiful depth of field. So. We have a lot of people shooting with these cameras now and it looks fantastic, but you have to be careful with the focus. It's very difficult with the way I work because if someone moves, I'm, I want to be looking at them uh, rather than looking at the camera to, to, to do this. I want to keep the interaction. So for me, these cameras are a nightmare. I'm much more interested in, in, in engaging in the, in the conversation with the people and just having the most easy, direct way to record it. So it suits me to work in this way, but I do enjoy looking at these beautiful, beautiful things that are shot with depth of field, that they have a very filmic quality to them, but um, I do sometimes worry that people get obsessed with image over content with, with these cameras, it's, and it just, it just becomes kind of beauty shots. It's very difficult to find funds for documentary. Most people that make their own films have to support making their own films with a day job. They have to do something else. Um, but the beauty of having equipment that's cheap and available is that you can shoot your own films with your cameras, that you can get quite cheaply, and you can edit your own films on your laptops. You're not sat at home writing a proposal, desperately waiting for funding before you can go out and make the film. You get out, you look for funding, but you make the film whilst you're looking for funding, and then that's what I did with the Syria thing, really. I never had the funding in place. I just continued going with it. And um, in fact, they'd said no. They didn't want a film from Syria. But when they saw me continuing with this story, they were commissioning my passion. They came in because they could see the passion of the filmmaker. I'm lucky that I do get commissioned. So I'm talking about the majority of people, which will be more likely to be the people here in Armenia who will not have support or funding. Um, but, you know, I did some work with the Tuma Technology Centre. and I just spoke to one of the students. She came to see me half an hour ago. She said, I want to thank you because the project you did with us, it's to 
gets completed, it was in the festival, it was given a prize in hot dogs in Canada. It's brilliant. Now stories are coming out from Armenia to the world by Armenian people, not by me coming in to make films in Armenia, but the stories are coming out to the world from Armenian people. They're not funded yet, but maybe because of that film, she'll get funding for the next film. I mean, there's no rules. I can't make a film here, but what I can do is support people that are making films here. And um, another, another woman from the workshop in Tumor um, sent me this incredibly intimate material of a hat maker, hat maker in, in Yerevan, and how the, the price of these hats, and that it's, 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 it's just amazing. You don't see this world in anywhere else. And you just have to see the specialness of what you have here and understand how that plays in a, in, in, to an audience in a festival outside. So I think those character moments uh, of incredible intimacy and special, there's something about his life that hasn't changed in a hundred years. And he's, he's full of, he doesn't have a care about the camera or an understanding about the process. And he's, he's, he's aggressive and he's rude to her when she's trying to make the film. And it's wonderfully funny. And in the process of making the film, he tries to set her up with his grandson to get married. <laughs> so there's all sorts of stuff going on that's a really beautiful, surprising film that's just about their simple friendship and relationship. If I came here, I would have to get a commission about something like The War With, which is kind of boring compared to this, these little vignettes of real life that are out there that play so specially in Amsterdam Film Festival or in Hot Docs in Toronto because, but, you know, this is what documentary is about, about, finding these little characters and moments in the world and then sharing them with cinema.